Good morning, students. Hope you might have completed your assignment, previous assignment work, which was assigned to you. That is question number 1.1 to 1.9. Let us now continue with our next part of our topic in solid state. We start here with crystal lattice and its unit cell. So firstly, I would like to tell you about what is a crystal lattice. Crystal lattice is a regular three-dimensional arrangement of points in space, right? It's a regular three-dimensional arrangement of points in space that is called as your crystal lattice. The main characteristic of crystalline solids is a regular and repeating pattern of constituent particles. If the three-dimensional arrangement of particles in a crystal is represented diagrammatically in which each particle is depicted as a point, the arrangement is called as the crystal lattice. I would like to show you the figure of a crystal lattice. You can see this figure. This is one part of a crystal lattice. And you can see this pink portion that is there in this slide. The pink part, that is a unit cell. This whole arrangement is a three-dimensional arrangement of points in space, which is called as a crystal lattice. And this, when generated in different directions, it results in the formation of a crystal lattice there. Now let us come to the characteristic features of a crystal lattice there. So the first and foremost characteristic of a crystal lattice is each point in a lattice is called as the lattice point. Then each point in a crystal lattice represents one constituent particle. That constituent particle may be an atom, it may be a molecule, or it may be an ion there. Then the third characteristic feature of the crystal lattice is lattice points are always joined by straight lines to bring out the geometry of the lattice. You can see in the diagram there, which I had shown you, that lattice points are joined together by straight lines so that it brings out the geometry of the lattice there. Next, we come to the next part of our topic, that is unit cell. The question comes in your board examination, define unit cell and name the par par parameters that characterize a unit cell there. So you will write the definition of a unit cell as unit cell is defined as the smallest part of the crystal lattice, which when repeated in different directions, generates the entire lattice there. So once again, I repeat this definition of unit cell. It is the smallest portion of a crystal lattice, which when repeated in different directions, it generates the entire lattice there. You can see here the diagram, the illustrations of parameters of a unit cell. So any unit cell is characterized by, a, by six parameters there. Any unit cell is characterized by six parameters. You can see the edge lengths A, B, and C. Edge lengths A, B, and C. You can see A, B, and C. And the angles alpha, beta, and gamma. You can see there. The angles alpha, beta, and gamma. They are your axial angles in which the angles are alpha is placed between edge lengths B and C, beta is placed between the edge lengths A and C, and gamma is placed between the edge lengths that is A and B. So any unit cell is characterized by six parameters, three edge lengths A, B, and C, and three axial angles alpha, beta, and gamma. This is the answer you'll be writing. The question comes, define unit cell and uh, name the six parameters that characterize a unit cell there. So as I already described, where A, B, and C are the dimensions of a unit cell along the three edges, and alpha, beta, and gamma are the angles between the edges of a unit cell there. So a unit cell is the smallest portion of a crystal lattice, which when repeated in different directions, generates the entire lattice there. Hope you have followed. Now let us come to the categories of unit cells there. 
So unit cells are characterized into two categories, primitive unit cells and the second one is centered unit cells. Primitive unit cells, as the name says, the constituent particles are present only on the corner positions of a unit cell there, right? I repeat once again, when constituent particles are present only on the corner positions of a unit cell, it is called as primitive unit cell. And centered unit cells, when the unit cell contains one or more constituent particles present at positions other than corners, in addition to those at corners, they are called as centered unit cells. Once again, I repeat the centered unit cells. When the unit cell contains one or more constituent particles present at positions other than corners, in addition to those that are at corners, are called as centered unit cells. So let me tell you about Centered unit cells are classified again into three types. First is body centered unit cells. They are designated as BCC, body centered unit cells. Second is face centered unit cells. They are designated as FCC and end centered unit cells. Let me now illustrate first about body centered unit cells there. So body centered unit cell, in such a unit cell, it contains one constituent particle at its body center. You can see this diagram that one constituent particle is present at its body center besides the one that are present at its corners. Right? So body centered unit cells are those in which the constituent particles are present at its corners, eight corners and along with it one constituent particle is present at its body. You can see this, this, the body, the particle is present at its body other than the constituent particles that are present at its eight corners there. So I hope you can see in this figure and you can imagine the three-dimensional arrangement of body-centered unit cell. Next, I come to the next part that is face-centered unit cells there. In face-centered unit cells, the constituent particles are present at each face other than the constituent particles which are present at its corner. So in addition to the constituent particles present at its eight corners at each face one constituent particle is present there so how many faces a, a cube has it has got six faces you should imagine a room in your mind so the room in which you are sitting suppose the right right side of you that is one part of of the left side is the other part in front is the third third part Back of you is the fourth one, upside up is the fifth one and the lower side is your sixth one there. So these are, if you imagine uh, your room to be a cube there, there are six faces which are present in a cube there. So in face centered cubic unit cell, in addition to the particles that are present at its corners, the constituent particles are also present at the center of each face there. That is face centered cubic unit cell that has been depicted in this diagram also. And accordingly, you should know about the face centered unit cell. It is abbreviated as FCC there. Let us come to the third part of the centered unit cell. It is end centered unit cells there. End and centered unit cells, the constituent particles are present at its eight corners there. Eight corners, the constituent particles are already present. But, but in addition to that, the constituent particles are present at any two opposite ends. I said the constituent particles in are present at any two, two opposite ends there. It may be top bottom, it may be right, left, it may be in front or back. Any two opposite 
ends, the constituent particles are present other than the constituent particles which are present at its corners. There. So this is end centered unit cells. This is the basic part which should be clear to you in your mind that what is a primitive unit cell? What is What are centered unit cells? Centered unit cells are further classified into three types. Body centered cubic unit cell, face centered cubic unit cell and the third one is end centered unit cells there. I hope I'm very clear with these three parts. Let me now come to the seven primitive unit cells there. So the seven primitive unit cells which are seen, these are the crystal system there, which are seen are cubic, first one, second is tetragonal, third is orthorhombic, fourth is hexagonal, fifth is rhombohedral, sixth is monoclinic and seventh is Seventh is triclinic there. So there are seven basic crystal systems which you should remember in your mind. And for that, you can remember this code word C-T-O-H-R-M-T. C-T-O-O-S-O-N-H together. R-M-T. C stands for cubic. T stands for tetragonal. O stands for orthorhombic. H stands for hexagonal. R stands for rhombohedral, M stands for monoclinic, and T stands for triclinic crystal system there. So these are the diagrams which have been shown to you that there are seven basic crystal systems which are present there. Cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, hexagonal, rhombohedral, monoclinic, and triclinic crystal systems there. Now let us come to the the table there you should know this table that is seven basic crystal systems or uh, that is they are your variations seven primitive unit cells and the possible variations as centered unit cells there let me tell you about the first cubic crystal system there so you can see in this in this table that the possible variations in case of cubic crystal systems primitive body centered and face centered there are three possible variations which can be generated in case of cubic crystal system and in this the edge limbs a is equal to b is equal to c there a is equal to b is equal to c and the axial angles alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma is equal to 90 degrees there so the axial angles, alpha, beta, and gamma are equal to 90 degree. And axial distances, that is edge lengths, A is equal to B equals to C. And you should remember the examples of cubic crystal system. It is sodium chloride, zinc blend, that is ZNS, galena, copper, Cu. These three are the examples which come under cubic crystal system. Before I go to the next crystal system, let me tell you about the most orderly crystal system that is present is the cubic crystal system there. Cubic crystal system is the most orderly arrangement of crystal system. Why? Because the axial distances, that is the edge lengths, A is equal to B is equal to C here and the axial angles, alpha equals to beta equals to gamma equals to 90 degree here, there. So the cubic crystal system is the most orderly arrangement of crystal system in nature. And the last crystal system, that is the triclinic system there, crystal system. The triclinic crystal system is, is the most disorderly crystal system that is found. Why? Because here the axial lengths, axial distances, the edge length that are there, A is not equal to B, is not equal to C here and alpha is also, that is axial angles, alpha is not equal to beta, not equal to gamma, not equal to 90 degrees here, there. So the triclinic is the most disorderly arrangement of crystal system because the axial lengths, the edge lengths is not equal to B, is not equal to C and the axial angles, alpha is not equal to beta, not equal to gamma, not equal to 90 degree here. And examples are potassium dichromate, copper sulfate, dot 5H2O, is called as blue vitriol and H3BO3 there, boric acid.
So I want to tell you, if you can remember these facts, remember in your mind about cubic is the most disorderly form and the triclinic is the most disorderly form crystal system there. For that, you can remember in, in your class, the student who is the most disciplined student of the class is comes under the category of cubic crystal system there. And the one who is the most indisciplined student of the class comes under triclinic crystal system. If you remember in this way, you will never forget the crystal systems there. So next I come to the next second arrangement of crystal system that is tetragonal crystal system there. The possible variations are body-centered and primitive cubic unit cell. Primitive and body-centered unit cells that are possible generations there. I'll show you the figures also for it. Here, the edge lengths A equals to B, but B is not equal to C there in case of tetragonal arrangement. But the axial angles, alpha equals to beta equals to gamma equals to 90 degrees there. So that's how you will remember in the second one that is tetragonal, A equals to B, but B is not equal to C, the edge length. But the axial angles, alpha, beta and gamma is are equal to 90 degree here. Example is white tin, tin oxide, SNO2, TiO2, titanium dioxide, calcium sulfate. Next, I come to the third crystal system in detail that is orthorhombic crystal system. There are four possible variations that can be generated for orthorhombic crystal system. Primitive, body-centered, face-centered, and end-centered. Primitive, I repeat, body-centered, face-centered, and end-centered. In this, axial distances, that is edge lengths, A is not equal to B, is not equal to C. So all the three are not equal. A is not equal to B is not equal to C. Whereas the axial angles, alpha equals to beta equals to gamma equals to 90 degrees there. So the axial angles here, alpha, beta and gamma are equal to 90 degrees. Example from rhombic, you will remember rhombic sulfur, potassium nitrate and barium sulfate. So orthorhombic example, you can remember rhombic sulfur. The fourth crystal system is hexagonal crystal system there. Hexagonal crystal system, there is only one possible variation that is generated and that is primitive cubic unit cell. In this, A is equal to B, but B is not equal to C here. And the axial angles, alpha equals to beta, is equal to 90 degree, but gamma is equal to 120 degrees here. An example is graphite, zinc oxide, cadmium sulfide, CDS. It is. The fifth crystal system is rhombohedral or trigonal crystal system there. Rhombohedral or trigonal crystal system. So here also only one possible variation can be generated and it is primitive cubic unit cell. And here the actual Edge, the edge lengths that are there, A is equal to B is equal to C, but the actual angles alpha equals to beta equals to gamma is not equal to 90 degree. Here, here the actual angles alpha equals to beta equals to gamma, they are not equal to 90 degree. Example is cinnabar and calcite, calcium carbonate. The sixth crystal system, which you can see is the monoclinic crystal system there. In monoclinic crystal system, there are two possible variations that are generated there. Primitive and end-centered unit cells there. And here, the, a, the edge lengths, A is not equal to B, is not equal to C there. Right? All the three are not equal. Edge lengths, A is not equal to B, is not equal to C. And the axial angles, alpha is equal to gamma, is equal to 90 degree here. But... Beta is not equal to 90 degrees there. So from monoclinic, you can remember the example monoclinic sulfur and sodium sulfate dot 10 h 2 Na2SO4 10 h 2 Then the last crystal system is your triclinic crystal system. As I said, this is the most disorderly crystal system that is seen and it has only one possible variation. It is primitive that is generated. Primitive possible variation is only generated and here on none 
that is edge lines a is not equal to b is not equal to c and the axial angles alpha is not equal to beta is not equal to gamma is not equal to 90 degree in this case and examples are potassium dichromate copper sulfate dot 5H2O that is called as blue vitriol and H3BO3 which is called as boric acids. So you will learn this table by heart because the question may come with the example that potassium dichromate belongs to which crystal system? You have to write there. It is triclinic crystal system which it belongs to. Write the axial the angles as well as the edge lengths. So edge lengths, remember, this is the most disorderly form. So A is not equal to B, is not equal to C, and alpha is not equal to beta, not equal to gamma, not equal to 90 degree, even the angles are not equal there. So thus we complete with this table and thus there are seven basic crystal systems. I asked you to remember C, T, O, R, M, T. C stands for cubic, T stands for tetragonal, O stands for orthorhombic, H stands for hexagonal, then rhombohedral, monoclinic and triclinic, RMT, rhombohedral, monoclinic and triclinic crystal systems there. So here if we finish with this part and we come to the diagrams which I said, the possible variation that can be generated. I said, you can see the unit cells of 14 types of Bravais lattices. So there are 14 Bravais lattices that are seen. And the first one, as I said, primitive, body-centered, face-centered. You can see the cubic, three cubic lattices of all sides. This is cubic lattice. All sides equal, edge lengths are also equal there. Second is the tetragonal system in which it is having two possible variations, primitive and body-centered unit cells there. And they differ in their length and angles all are 90 degree there. The third orthorhombic, you can see there are, there are four possible variations that can be generated. Primitive, end-centered, body-centered and face-centered. Primitive is, you can see, eight corners. The constituent particles are present at the eight corners there. End centered, the second one you can see in addition to eight corners, the constituent particles that are present, in addition to that, any two opposite ends, the constituent particles are present. Body centered, you can see the third figure, the constituent particles are present at its corners. In addition to that, the constituent particle is present at its body. One constituent particle is present at its body. That is body-centered cubic unit cell. And in face-centered cubic unit cell, you can see the in addition to the constituent particles that are present at its corners, at each face, one constituent particle is present there. So they are orthorhombic lattices that are generated there. Next one, you can see the monoclinic lattices, unequal sides, and two faces have angles different to 90 degrees there. And then the next diagram you can view the next two ones. Yes, it is the triclinic lattice, the last one, and hexagonal lattice, one side different in length to the other two, the marked angles on two faces that are 60 degrees there. And the last one is your triclinic lattice. You can see the last diagram. The triclinic lattice, unequal sides, A is not equal to B, is not equal to C, and the angles alpha, beta, and gamma is not equal to 90 degrees there. So we finish here with the possible variations, and here we complete this part. Let us come to the in-text questions now. The first in-text question is, give the significance of the lattice point. So I have shown you in the slide when I was telling you the characteristic features of the lattice points there. There I had given you three points. You will take two points into account to get the significance of the lattice point. The first, second point which was included in that characteristic feature is each point in a crystal lattice represents one constituent particle which may be an atom, a molecule or a I in there. So each point in a crystal lattice represents one constituent particle that may be an atom, that may be a molecule, or it may be an I in there. 
the second characteristic feature rather you can say the third one third characteristic feature of the crystal lattice which i have shown you in the slide previous slide lattice points are joined by straight lines to bring out the geometry of the lattice so lattice points are joined together by straight lines to bring out the geometry of the lattice there so you will write these two points to give the significance of the lattice point let us come to index question 1.11 the question is name the parameters that characterize a unit cell the answer to this question you will write a unit cell is characterized by six parameters there a unit cell is characterized by six parameters three edge lengths that is a a b and c and three axial angles the three axial angles are alpha beta and gamma alpha beta and gamma so a unit cell is characterized by six parameters three edge lengths a b and c and three axial angles alpha beta and gamma there right look at the next question 1.12 it is distinguish between hexagonal and monoclinic unit cells hexagonal and monoclinic unit cells just now i have shown you the table there in that table you will write the difference with respect to edge lengths with respect to axial angles with respect to examples so hexagonal monoclinic unit cells you need to differentiate between them first you will differentiate hexagonal unit cell there so hexagonal unit cell the edge lengths there are a equals to b but b is not equal to c there the edge length there first you will write the difference with respect to edge length a equals to b but b is not equal to c there and axial angles in case of hexagonal unit cell alpha equals to beta equals to 90 degrees and gamma is equal to 120 degrees there so alpha equals to beta is 90 degree in this case in hexagonal unit cell and gamma is equal to 120 degrees there and the example is graphite zinc oxide and cadmium sulfide cds and monoclinic unit cell here the edge lengths a is not equal to b is not equal to c all the three edge lengths are not equal here whereas the axial angles alpha equals to gamma equals to 90 degree but beta is not equal to 90 degrees there alpha equals to gamma equals to 90 degree but beta is not equal to 90 degrees monoclinic unit cell i asked you to remember the example with respect to that monoclinic term only the answer example there you will write as monoclinic sulfur and sodium sulfate decahydrate Na2SO4 dot 10H2O. I hope it is clear. Let us come to the second distinction between face centered and N centered unit cells. I started with this part only. Face centered unit cells are those cells in which the constituent particles, in addition to the corners which are present at its corners, the each constituent particle is also present at its face so in face centered unit cells the constituent particle is present at its faces in addition to the eight corners the constituent particles that are also placed that is face centered unit cell there are six faces which are there in face centered unit cells and in end centered unit cells in addition to the constituent particle that are present at its eight corners right the constituent particles are, can be present at any two opposite ends it can be up down it can be right left it can be in front or back so there are six faces of a cube so n centered unit cells are those in which the constituent particles in addition to that that are present at its eight corners any two opposite ends the constituent particles can be present now look at the last question question number 1.13 the question is explain how much portion of an atom located at 
the corner of a unit cell is part of its neighboring unit cell i'll deal with this part in the next topic but let me tell you the answer the portion of an atom located at the corner uh, of a unit cell is part of its neighboring unit cell is 1 by 8 i'll explain you how we get that 1 by 8 part of it and the second part question of the question body center of a cubic unit cell is part of its neighboring unit cell there you will write ex, the question is explain how much portion of an atom located at body center of a cubic unit cell is part of its neighboring unit cell the answer there you will write is the atom at the body center of a cubic unit cell is not being shared by any other unit cell hence it belongs fully to the unit cell there so i'll deal with this in the next part of my topic and in the next part i'll tell you how to calculate the number of atoms that are present in a unit cell we'll see that in three cases primitive cubic unit cell the second body centered cubic unit cell and the third is face centered cubic unit cell till then you will do this assignment questions that is from 1.10 to 1.13 as homework in any of the assignment copy that is there with you no need to buy a new copy do the right do right in any of the copy that is available to you the pages which are available to you Thank you so much.